Everyone's going gaga about the new Sony WF-1000XM3 earbuds. But this real conversation will give you 10 reasons why you should not buy these earbuds. Now to be clear, we like these earbuds a lot and we've done a full review on them so check that out before you drop some hate in the comments below. You know when the AirPods came out, there were so many jokes about it being so expensive. Yeah, and these are more expensive than the expensivest AirPods available right now. Of course, Sony prices tend to move a lot, so depending on when you watch this video, this may not be true. Yeah, for the latest prices, check out the links in the description below. If you use those links, it won't cost you anything extra, but it will help out the channel a little bit. Though the prices might change, one thing Sony cannot change is the size of these earbuds and the case. Compared to other wireless earbuds, these are the bulkiest we've seen. Sure, they're a little bit harder to pocket, but hey, they're much better to hurt people with by throwing the earbuds at them. If you want to. Whoa. We think the bigness in price and size comes due to the fact that Sony wanted to pack in all of that active noise cancelling tech. It works pretty well though. One big but though, do you really need active noise cancelling on earbuds? I mean, it might be useful for, you know, letting in ambient sound or listening to music critically. But given that these are in-ears, you already have a nice passive seal which blocks all the sounds around you. So about that seal, Sony provides a lot of tips. But I felt like none of them really fit my ears properly and I felt like I was always in between sizes. Yes, they should have included, you know, those high quality foam comply tips like Bang & Olufsen does. Especially at this price. Now that's a tip for Sony. Yeah, and without a good fit and a good tip, the noise cancelling as well as the sound quality is compromised. And you know, even if the tips are fine and they fit well, the in-ear form factor, I don't think is for everyone. I personally prefer over-ears for longer listening sessions. And even the AirPods, which I know a lot of people hate, still are a bit more comfortable than the Sony's for me personally. But that applies to all in-ears, uh, so your mileage may vary and it's not necessarily a criticism of the WF-1000XM3. Comfort aside, for about $50 less, we'd have taken a smaller case and better Bluetooth codecs. Yeah, I mean, I find it surprising that Sony chose AAC, which is, you know, which works better with iPhones than it does on Android. They skipped aptX and LDAC, their own proprietary codec. Seems like a strange choice to me, considering a lot of Android users will buy these earbuds. And what's with the naming convention, Sony? You continue to have password-like names for all of your devices, even the over-ears. A big step up from the over years is that you no longer have to disconnect from the first device to connect to the second. But you still can't stay connected to two devices like you can on the Bang & Olufsen or the Sennheiser or the Bose. What's going on Sony? When are you going to fix this? Another thing that was inconsistent on Android devices was NFC pairing. The first time I paired it, it worked without a hitch. But after that, it just wouldn't pair, despite forgetting the earbuds on the phone. The only solution was to long press both earbuds and initiate pairing mode. And last but not least, let's talk phone calls. Now phone calls are very reasonable, not bad at all, but they are a bit unpredictable and inconsistent. They go up and down and sometimes if the voice quality on the other side isn't very great, due to the high treble nature of these earbuds, the voices become a bit grating, so that can be quite annoying. You've been refraining from commenting. And we've been D-H-R-M-E. If you want to. Whoa! <laughs> you actually chucked it. <laughs> Maybe now the NFC pairing will work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>